Good morning. We're live here in St. Louis, Missouri. We're here with Rashane Aldridge. All right, and today is May 22nd, 2016. And we've been talking about you and the different things that you've done in the community as far as what kind of boards you're on, different organizations, and just all the things that you're doing in order to be a leader or a community organizer, okay? And we mentioned the part about you going to the White House, you know. So how in the world, I mean, I know you've led the fight for, you know, wage increase and civil rights when it came to the situation with Mike Brown in Ferguson, Missouri. But how did you get the opportunity to talk, to, to be right there with the president? I mean, who called you and said, hey, can you come with us to the White House? Who called you on that? I'm not going to lie. That was so surreal. The Department of Justice called me. Uh, I was working at National Alamo. They, I was working a night shift. And they had called my cell phone. I don't even know how they got my number. They called my cell phone, and it was a Thursday. They called and asked me if I can... Um, the, they called and said that the President of the United States wanted to meet with you and other young people uh, around the uh, U.S. about some of the issues that's been going on. Uh, do you think you can fly out tomorrow? <laughs> Tomorrow, I mean, I gotta work, but for the president, I definitely probably can get off uh, and manage to get off. Uh, told my manager, you know, the president of the United States kind of want to see me. And what they say? Did they say, yeah, right, yeah, sure, you better be they, to work tomorrow? To be honest, no, they didn't believe me, and I had to pull up. Like, look, you see, this is Washington D.C., but they knew all my activities from uh, what I was doing in Ferguson and seeing me on TV. So they also believed it a little bit but they also was like this is the president like he don't want to meet you right uh and made it work and flew out friday we uh met with the president but hold on wait, wait, wait. stop right there slow down slow down so 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 now you got to washington dc uh -huh. you're like right there on the white house line you get ready going to the white house what is going through your head i mean thinking about all those different things that you fought for to get to this point what is going through your head when you on the white house line and you get ready to go up to the white house what are you thinking about to be honest like i say it was it was surreal because going back to 2008 uh watching him on tv me and my grandmother watching every cnn debate and primary every election night um seeing all the polls come in and slowly seeing him win uh, at one point him being a senator and then being the first African-American president. I remember even skipping school, uh, going to my granny house to see his inauguration and recorded it. We still got the CD at her house. So he was, he was someone that I still today look up to and idolize, especially as a, a young person wanting to do something positive but didn't know what to do positive and seeing uh, someone who looked like me being the president of the United States uh, accomplishing a goal that today's uh, world you probably wouldn't we always talk about having a black president but for it to actually happen in our time uh, it, it meant a lot so fast forward to four years later uh, it was it was a, a moment that I couldn't even believe was gonna happen um, but at the same time I had to remind myself this was a man that I idolized this is a man that I almost you know kind of want to be like but me and other young people were here on serious business. Uh, we talking. To, we got the opportunity to speak with the Commander in Chief of the United States for who knows how long. And to be honest, they was telling us not everyone was going to go in, only one of us. So we only had his ear for maybe 20 to 30 minutes of what we was thinking. So we, I knew it was business. I had to kind of keep reminding myself as I was walking up the line and seeing, you know, the White House, the same house you see on TV and entering through the West Wing and seeing all the, uh, the pictures. I mean, you can get blown away by it. I mean, especially uh, being, in that, being in that area, uh, being in that circle, you can quickly forget on why we was invited there. And for in and out part of the time, I did kind of forget why I was there because this was, like I say, this was the first African-American president. This was history. And uh, I was being part of history by being able to meet him. But at the end of the day, I had to, like I say, remember that it was people like myself that actually built this White House, right? Uh, so it was deeper than just, oh my God, it's a beautiful place, but uh, we're on here serious business. How can we uh, talk to the president for the little time that we got so we can hopefully change his mind or hopefully have him at the time come to Ferguson or write some type of policy so we can get some solution done? That's what it was all about, solution, but it was, it was hard to... 
try to remember that it was we was there for work. We okay. For work. So you in the White House. You walk through the line, you go through the West Wing, and then you stand there at the door. I saw this picture on Facebook. We stand there. It's like your eyes and were glazed over. It's like standing there shaking the president's head. You're like, oh, my gosh, this is the president. You're like tranced, you know. So, like, okay, you standing there. You're in the door. You're looking right at the president in his eyes. What are you thinking? What's going on? What did y'all say to each other? What did he say to you when he saw you? So, before we had met with the president, we actually met with his uh, his staff, mm -hmm. his cabinet, um, not the like Secretary of Defense and all that, but just his his personal staff, uh, administration, administration, mm -hmm. uh, and as we met with them, they was just telling us about the different thing that the president was doing, so such as our brother's keeper, the speech that he had delivered right after Trayvon Martin, uh, letting us know that you know police brutality has been an issue that he has addressed before and that he's serious about. Uh, and that we don't necessarily need to tell stories to the president personally, but tell solutions uh, on what we think can better our community in St. Louis or what we think can better our community in Florida or in Ohio or in New York. Uh, and then at that time they told us that we always gonna go in and not just one of us. Um, so we went upstairs and as we was walking up the stairs, there's pictures all across uh, the hallway of president at different events, the president kissing the baby, the president and Michelle Obama. So it's just, once again, it's, it's, it's this surreal moment. Like we have took this movement from Ferguson all the way to the White House to be talking to the commander in chief. We took this movement from New York, took this movement from Ohio, took this movement from Florida to the White House to really be talking to the commander in chief. Uh, and as we lined up and we walked uh, up the stairs, through the hallway, and started to go back to the West Wing. Um, we stood outside the door and they said, the president's gonna come out soon. We all just stood there waiting, <laughs> waiting for the president. And eventually, he opened up, and you know he opened up, because all the cameras, ch -ch -ch -ch, all cameras just get the snapping, and uh, you're hearing all the click, click, click. Uh, he opens up and he started to greet everyone. I think I was probably the third or fourth person that he had greeted, and like I say to, I mean, to see a man that uh, you envision to not be exactly like, but to be able to take what he's doing and to implement it back in your own neighborhood mm -hmm. and to one day actually be this close with him looking, looking in his face, uh, I, it, it, was, it, was, it was, it was a surreal moment. It was a moment that at that time, and I'm, I'm probably not going to lie, when I shook his hand, uh, I forgot why I was there. Uh, I forgot that it was about the work. But as we sat around um, the couches and we started to have the conversation, I quickly remember why we was here for all the other young people in Ferguson, for all the other young people in New York, all the other young people across the U.S. that probably wish they had the opportunity to tell the president on what they feel can better in their neighborhoods, can better in their community, what he can do as the President of the United States to fix this issue of police brutality, especially being someone, like I say, who looks like us and understands, right, more than ever, what's going on in the world. To have that opportunity, it was, it was a moment that I'm grateful for, it was a moment I won't forget. It, it was a moment that showed that all the hard work that we've done in Ferguson and across the world, no matter all the names we got called, no matter all the tear gas that we got shot with, no matter all the community first before people we heard, uh, our voice was heard. Our message was resonated. Uh, change has happened, and it, as we've seen it, it was slowly happening as we went to the White House. All right, this is Erica Brooks. We'll be right back with Rasheen. Thank you so much.